Hello, viewers. We have got Dr. Rajiv Pathak. He's a staff scientist in the Albert Einstein Institute of Medical Sciences. Welcome, Rajiv, to this program. May I request you to please share your academic journey. First of all, thank you so much, sir, for giving me this uh, wonderful opportunity to share my thoughts. So I did my master's from University of Lucknow, Department of Biochemistry in, in the field of biotechnology. And after that, I joined Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology under the kind supervision of Dr. Hemant K. Gautam, Dr. Shantanu Chaudhary, and Dr. Y. Singh. And my doctoral work was based on to understand the functional relevance of g quadruplex forming sequences in microbial genome. So after that, I joined Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York, USA, as a postdoctoral fellow in 2017. And right now, I am working as a staff scientist in the in the Department of Genetics in the same institute. Thank you, Rajiv, for this. Rajiv, you have been a university student and then you have seen a research institute. What is the difference in the work environment in university and research institute in India? Uh, very good question, sir. So in the university system, I must uh, mention that there are some issue related to like you have to the funding constraint instrument and everything this is not valid for all the institutions but if i can say like some institute are really good like yeah, JNU, state VHU, university are suffering state, from it. yeah state university are suffering from this one but research uh, institutes are like well funded and you have to mainly focus on the research so you don't need to focus your uh, uh like to teaching students to mentor and all other things. So that was one of the major difference I find between the university system and the research institution in India. So personally, I would like to remain in the research institution. Okay, this is individual choice. Somebody may prefer teaching, somebody may prefer yes. doing research. So research institutions obviously are a good choice for active researchers. Active researchers. Yeah, who would like to make a name here. Uh, Raji, what is the difference between Indian research environment and the U.S. research environment? So you have been from here to uh, U.S. So two way I would like to ask this question. First, how did you prepare yourself uh, for okay. taking a position in U.S.? And second, what is the difference you are feeling in the research environment in two places? Okay, so first I want to mention that it was not easy for me to get a postdoctoral position. The reason my post my PhD work was based on the bacterial bacterial system, and I wanted to do my postdoc in something different field like viruses or stem cells. So that's why I have to apply only in that field. So at that time, I I like it was in my mind like if you have some experience in that field, then only you will be selected. But when I started applying, I started multiple, I did multiple applications. And then I realized like, this is not, this is just a myth. If you want to change your field, you can change your field. So, and also uh, there was like, at that time I have like 18 publication in my PhD, but one of the most uh, uh, publication which helped me, that was my nucleic acid research, which was my first author paper. So all the PIs are professors where I applied. So they were only talking about that publication. So this is the second thing. So they don't see like you have multiple publications or anything like if you have one good publication that is more than enough to get selected. So I applied like I, applied in many institutions in the US because I wanted to go to the US. Uh, that was my first choice. So I applied here and then I, I got selected in Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Uh, and here, uh, my main work is based on the HIV latency and persistence and atypical teratoid and rhabdia tumor that is pediatric cancer. So that is completely different from my PhD work. Yeah. So apart from approaching, when you were making multiple applications, you said one, it is important that you should have one or two good quality paper rather than a large number. So even large number is not bad, but you should have at least one yes. or two quality statement, quality which is space uh, for your research work. And secondly, you have to apply at multiple sources. 
so yes. don't feel that you would be selected in round one round two round three there could be multiple application you have to make and eventually we do hope that you find a successful post and also here i want to share one more thing like uh, when i got selected or when i got like some skype interview at that time so i asked my professors uh, interviewers like i don't have any uh, related uh, expertise in your lab so just i want to ask like uh, uh, if you don't mind like why you selected me so their answer was really surprising. So they mentioned like, if you did great in your PhD, you will do great in your postdoc. So expertise doesn't matter because you can understand, you can learn all these expertise in within two or three months. So I that was the is, one basic thing. This I is give very you. important because PhD is considered as a journey to make you an independent thinker who could visualize what is the problem statement and how you are going to address what kind of equipment you would be using and eventually for whom you are doing this development so if you have done good so while interacting with many phd students in india i have failed this uh, face this problem that research scholars are not very clear why they are doing this work because they will say whatever my guide will say i'll work like a robo which is not helping you so please correct yourself and uh, be very clear why you are doing that particular work and that will drive you to your postdoctoral journey. Uh, did you face some issue in terms of culture, in terms of uh, visa, in terms of uh, other logistic issues yeah. when you got transferred from one place to another? Yeah. So during my... Uh, so I never faced any issue in the US. And also like uh, here, I feel like I am staying in mini India. Like here, a lot of Indians are there. In my institute, Albert Einstein College of Medicine, like uh, we have more than 50 postdocs from India. So that, so I never felt any issue in like cultural issue here. So uh, only thing like visa related issue, because uh, as we know, like the US visa takes a lot of time fill like ds-160 form and then college send us like uh, ds 2019 and uh, offer later then we have to apply for visa and after that we have to wait for the interview schedule because generally uh that that is one of the major problem like we get interview slots uh, for visa interview like after sometimes it is more than six months so that that is flexible so that is the only problem and you have to just wait patiently and once you get interview so i think the past uh the visa you can get just within like 10 days so that is not an issue yeah so most of the postdoc comes here on j1 visa yeah so i think this is an important advice that you need to plan your visas uh immediately after selection you must apply without delay because there are other factors governing visa so that may take uh, a time you can't predict so better apply for visa as soon as you get confirmation letter. Uh, Rajiv, uh, what are your future plans? Like in terms of research, how do you see your future? In what way you would like to contribute to the society? Yeah. So uh, before that, I want to first mention that what I am doing in my postdoctoral research. Yeah, sure. So my postdoctoral research is based on HIV latency and persistence. And here I am trying to explore what are the reason mechanistic reason behind the latency and some what are the reason behind the stochastic reactivation of this latency and my second project was based on atypical tried and rehab diet tumor that is pediatric cancer and when in 2019 december when the covid 19 came so i also applied my all virological expertise in covid 19 so I was able to visualize uh, the single molecule of RNA, genomic RNA at 30 minutes after, after infection. So that was really uh, one of the good uh, result and good thing I explored. So based on all these expertise, I want to remain in, in this uh, academic environment, in the search environment. But one of the long term, my plan to come back to India, but also I have my backup plan in the US because my long-term goal is to come back to India, but still, uh, like even if you are doing research, so we always have backup plan. 
if our hypothesis doesn't work, then what will be my backup plan? If backup plan is not ready, then we will be stuck. <laughs> so my long-term goal is to come back to India, but I also have some backup plan like green card application and everything. So in the US, so that I can be here doing active research, something. Yeah, I think to all those fellows who are listening to this interview and also to Rajiv, there are fellowships being offered by government of India. Ramalinga Swami Fellowship, Ramanujam Fellowship, and Inspire Fellowship, which provides young postdocs from abroad to come and settle down in India. And these fellowships are good for five years. So I would recommend you to explore those fellowships. Also, I would advise you to remain connected with the Indian groups working in your area. Because whenever you are looking for collaborations, so even if you are you decide to live in US, you can continue working with Indian people on Indian challenges. And that would provide you long-term connectivity. There are programs like Beba, Bajra, Gyan, Spark. Several kind of programs are there for the Indian diaspora. So make use of those programs. Rajiv, uh, what would be your advice to the future aspirant of postdoctoral fellowship abroad from India? So as I mentioned that it is not necessary if you have done your PhD in different field, you cannot apply in different field, like in the same field. You have to apply only in the same field. That is not necessary. So you can change your field anytime, even after PhD. So that is the first thing. And the second thing, you have to plan first. You have to prepare yourself. What is your interest? Like you have to apply only if you have interest, then you will do better. So first you have to plan what we want to do in future, what we want to do in my long-term goal. And then also uh, plan for visa and everything ahead of time because it takes a lot of time, like more than six months and sometimes it can take a year. So Rajiv, it was wonderful talking to you and your last piece of suggestion. Don't be prisoner of your choices. Don't feel that if you have done PhD in a particular area, that remains lifelong with you uh, you are free PhD is a training how you are going to address address question differently that is something very important and you should look for those things thank you Rajiv it was nice talking to you looking thank forward. you so much sir